My name's Scott Wilkinson. I'm a professional piercer, and today we are doing a piercer spotlight, and today we're talking to Steve Truitt. Hi, Steve. Hi, Scott. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so we're just going to talk about some of your career here. Now, did you start out as a body modification artist, or did you start off as a piercer? Um, I started as a piercer. Um, I've been piercing professionally in shops since 1995. Okay. What, um, have you always owned your own shop or do, have you worked for other people? I've worked for other people uh, in the beginning of my career. Um, I ended up opening my own shop with some friends in uh, 2004 in Albuquerque. Um, it, it was called Stay Gold and we did tattoo and piercing. Um, and then I went my own way from my business partners who were tattoo artists and opened Ascension Body Mod in uh, 2009. Excellent. And with Ascension Body Mod, do you do tattoos, or is it just piercings, or is it piercings and modifications? Um, we do pretty much everything. I've got uh, tattoo artists, piercers, and then I do the Body Mod stuff. Excellent. Now, how did you get into Body Mod? I mean, was it just started with piercing and it just wasn't enough, or there's a demand for it, or how, how did you get into it? Um, I went to a tattoo convention in 1996, uh, the Ink Slingers Ball in Hollywood, and I met Steve Hayworth. Okay. And he was just starting doing, um, like the implants under the skin, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so I got one done and told him then, I want to do this. This is really cool. I want to do that. And he was like, Yeah, <laughs> come talk to me after you've been around for a while and we'll see. Okay. And <laughs> what was the implant you saw? What was the first thing you saw? Um, the first one that I actually saw in person is the one in my wrist right here. <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay. Um, Steve did this in 1996. Wow. That is awesome. Yeah, this one's uh, me metal. <laughs> it's it's metal. that old. <laughs> okay, okay. And I noticed you have some beads on your arm here. Yeah. What yeah. are these? Um, these are Teflon beads. Um, Steve did these for me in, I think, 2000. Okay. Yeah, I've got them on both arms. Um, this one is silicone because uh, I had an accident, it came out, and so when I replaced it, I put silicone in there. And then I've got a few other silicone pieces that Steve did. Okay. So you said replaced it. So these, this is a reversible thing. Yeah, yeah, they can be removed if necessary. Um, not as easily as like a piercing or something, but they can be removed. Okay. Um, now, as far as the mods go, it, what all do you do? I mean, I've seen people with horns, metal mm -hmm. mohawks, like the yeah. subdermals. Yeah, I do the subdermals, um, transdermals occasionally, but they don't tend to last very long, so I try and talk people out of them. Um, the transdermals are where they come through the where skin? They come through the skin. Okay. Yeah, it's much easier to do a microdermal and, you know, surface anchor, take it out when you need to, than to try and get a transdermal in there these days, leave it for a year, and then have to pull it anyway. <laughs> gotcha. Now, can these leave really big scars? They can. Um, typically, they're not too bad, though, if the person putting them in and removing them knows what they're doing. Um, for example... Here's a scar right here from a, an implant that was about that big. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's not as big of a scar as you would expect. No. Okay. Yeah, and if the black tattoo wasn't here, you probably wouldn't see it. Yep, yep. <laughs> now, if you were to take these beads out, would the skin be loose here, or would that all kind of go back to no, normal? No, you can see there was a bead right here. There was, okay. Um, and it's gone and oh, back normal. to normal. So what about the success rate? Like for like the subdermals underneath the skin, mm -hmm. do they ever reject? Do they ever cause serious problems? Or most of them are fairly easy and problem free? Most of them are fairly easy, problem free. They can, like, I mean, you can get an infection anytime you open the skin. Um, you, you can have them reject. It's pretty rare. Um, usually happens after trauma to the implant, like banging it around or scraping it or something like that that breaks the skin um it's pretty rare that they just randomly reject okay now as far as on the body like where mm -hmm. can you do these like i've seen them on heads mm -hmm. i've seen is it anywhere in the body's a possibility technically anywhere could be possible they just aren't going to show up in a lot of areas um places like on the arm where it's got something you know the tighter skin and something to hold it in place uh -huh. um, where it will stand out um, work really well um, the forehead the sternum the hands where it's really tight skin you can get good definition and get more intricate shapes there um, same with the forehead um, other places like in the chest or the ribs or the forearms the skin um, 
there's not as much like a bone or hard backing to it. Uh So they kind of sink in a little bit and they're not as visible. Okay, okay. What about like fingers or like directly on the hands? I mean, it's um, possible. Um, I have one, you know, here on my thumb and I've done them on people's thumbs. Um, The fingers though, you you hit them on everything. So a lot of times they're gonna be more problematic and more likely to get uh, hit by something and reject. That's, yeah, I can imagine that. It's kind of the same as piercings then. It's not too yeah. much different. Yeah. Now, what about general aftercare for these things? It's not like an open wound or like a piercing. No. Um, so there's an incision um, with some sutures um, that where it's put in at. Um, that's really all you're healing. Um, the body will heal around the implant. You'll get some scar tissue around it, and it will kind of define uh, as it heals. Because mm-hmm. at first, obviously, it's going to be pretty swollen. But um, it takes anywhere from 6 to 12 months to get full definition. Um, and that will change, too, depending on how hydrated you are that day, how dehydrated you are, um, you know, weight fluctuations and things. So some days your implant will just stand out and look crazy, and then other days it's a little more subtle and rounded okay. off. And, so if I got something in my hand today, I wouldn't see other than a lot of puffiness. Right, yeah, you're not going to see just, that you for gotta a couple wait, weeks. you got to be patient. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Other mods, what like so we talked about transdermal, subdermals, like the mm-hmm. horns and things. What other things can people get? I mean, that people wouldn't know about. Um, tongue splitting is very popular. Uh huh. Um, that's something that is blown up the last few years. There's so many of them being done. Um, a coin slot or large gauge holes, like in the cartilage. Uh huh. Um, people get a lot of those done lately. Um, a lot of people are kind of reversing things too and getting rid of things like stretched ear lobes and going back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, or yeah, you know, closing up old piercing scars, things like that. What what about like um what is it called? Elf ears where they kind of yeah. point the ears or Yeah, there's the ear pointing. Um <clears throat> they're in my opinion, there are really only two people in the world that do it well. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, it, it can end really, really bad. Really badly. Really yes. badly. So yeah, that's not something careful. that I do. There are, there are two people that I send everybody to. Awesome. Awesome. As far as like the tongue splitting, you said it's getting really, really popular. Um, is this something less experienced body modification artists can do, or you still need someone? No, you, you should still have somebody who really knows what they're doing. Um, it's something that is very hard to fix if it goes wrong. Okay. Um, so it is fixable though. Not always. Not always. Yeah. Okay. Um, like I've, I've had several people that got them done by other people that had me try and fix them. And there's only so much that can be done. A lot of cases. That's your tongue. It's your tongue. Yeah. It's your tongue. You mentioned coin slots earlier. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, so people will do like a little um, oval cutout in the cartilage so that they can stack rings or other type of jewelry through it. Um, it looks kind of like a coin slot that you would, you know, drop a quarter in or a diamond or something on a, you know, candy machine or video game or, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, so that's where the name comes from. Um, they are typically, in my opinion, a lot easier to heal than even a piercing (laughs) even though it's a more extreme um body mod it just heals faster (laughs) okay so that's basically just kind of almost cut and then like sutured shut yeah then the the skin sutured shut around it so um it heals a lot faster than when you poke a hole and are trying to heal something with jewelry in it that's rubbing around and trying to form new tissue in there wow super super crazy how long till the stitches come out and you can start wearing jewelry in there um, average is about two weeks until the stitches are out. And then once it's not scabby anymore, you can put jewelry in. So maybe another week or so. So people typically have jewelry in it within two to four weeks. It's incredible. I thought it would be way longer than that. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, I think that they look great. <laughs> okay. Um, now as far as like the, you said transdermals, the ones that mm-hmm. kind of poke through the, those are problematic. Yeah. yeah. Why is that? Um, they just don't last. Um, I had transdermal horns and I had them for a really long time. I had them for about eight years. Um, most people that get transdermals just start having problems with them and will keep them less than two years. Um, I'd say pretty average one to two years. 
Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone wanted to get work by you, how do they, how do you go about this? Um, I mostly do consultations through like Instagram or Facebook um, or email or over the phone or okay. if I'm in person, if I'm in the same place that the person's at. Um, and then talk to them, you know, we kind of go over what they want to do, um, if it's something that's possible, um, you know, cost, all of that stuff, and then get it scheduled. Now, next big question that everyone always seems to ask is, if they couldn't come to you, how do you find a good body modification artist? What are you looking for? That That's the really hard question. <laughs> it's, it is a tough um, question. Personally, there are only a few people that I would get work done by. Um, but really, a lot of it is, you know, do your research, kind of ask around online, um, you know, Facebook, Instagram, look through, see how, you know, people's work looks, word of mouth, like talk to some people. Um, but there are some people out there that are just really bad that are very friendly and have good personalities that people like. So <laughs> they continue to get a lot of referrals. Um, but yeah, really look into their work. Um, healed work. Healed work. Healed work. Yeah, you definitely want to look up the healed work. Um, there are you know forums on Facebook, on Reddit, on Instagram. Like, there's um, people that have been around for a long time, and then there's other people that are just brand new. And you know, you really want to be careful if somebody's doing that. Also, the prices, because there's some people that are like, oh yeah, I'll do that for like fifty bucks, and it's like. That's that should be a red flag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it, it does take you know doing some research, but look around the people that that do it regularly. Mm -hmm. There are some people that'll tell you, oh, I can do that. I've done that before, but you know maybe they did that once ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then there are other people who do that every day. So <laughs> someone in practice, someone in practice, things to yeah. heal, and uh, not just nice. Right, and yeah. you know, figure for this. Um, Personally, if I were getting work done by anyone other than myself, there's like maybe three or four people I would get it from. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to travel for that or wait until they're in the area. Yeah. Do you do a lot of traveling for these types of things? Or is yeah, it, yeah. I'm, I'm traveling most of the time. Um, I'm on the road as much or more than I'm at home. So, yeah, I, I travel all over the place. Um, several other people travel quite a bit, too. Okay. Super, super cool. All right, well, thanks for sitting down and talking to me. I'm sure everyone here really enjoyed this, and we really appreciate it. Now, if you guys have any comments or questions, let us know down below. And if you're interested in getting any work done or want to get a hold of Steve, all the information is right down below. Now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you're subscribed, hit the like button, and of course, keep what holds your body. We'll see you on the next video.